all the goth DJs and twitch witches are hanging out on Thursday for the bad VHS rips, unblinking eyes, and fire by night. Thetans and Satans comes from an interest in the cult of Scientology, moral panics, Satanism, and how they set the tone for the extremist social media panics of today. We really earn our weird left Twitch badge with this show, watching the world go red light in reverse every Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash echoplexmedia. Find our full schedule at echoplexmedia.com. Disregard females and acquire currency. Uh, not appropriate. Welcome live viewers and welcome podcast listeners. This is an extended version of the Plex podcast. We do the show live every Sunday, 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific and beyond into red light. Also, this being the fifth Sunday of the month, this show will be a freebie. Not only will patrons get the entire audio uh, for at least a week or two, you'll be able to download the raw video, uh, not even stepped on by like Odyssey or the other services, just right off the 
right off the recording here because that's what we do the fifth Sunday if there happens to be one. Um, you can support this project at patreon.com slash echoplex or for other ways to support, go to echoplexmedia.com and click the support tab. Uh, I'm producer David. You can find me on Grinder, And I'm historian Matt and you can find me on, well, one other Echoplex Media show, the uh, How the Tech Are You, which we record on Mondays and release on Wednesdays. It's not a live show. You have to get it recorded. Um, what else? Um, hopefully, I'll have some good news next week because in a couple days, the uh, the waiting period for um, my uh, graphic novel of uh, sales numbers come through so it takes like three months for it to actually tell me if i sold anything so hopefully the good news will be that i actually sold some and i'll continue making graphic novels but uh we'll find out next week i guess and uh i think that's everything for now so david why don't you uh give the people what they want police officers i don't hate the cops there's a person inside when the truncheon stops Oh, don't hate the cops Oh, when the raiders come Who will protect the shops? Don't hate the cops They're a sensitive bunch If you don't stop throwing your rocks Snap, crack, or pop Is the sound of a taser Your body drops Don't hate the cops oh, don't hate the cops Don't hate the cops oh, Don't hate the cops Like your local police Cause they don't do nothing wrong Like your local police Got rid of the corruption And the racism is gone They've been keeping the peace Keeping homeless folks out of the parks and malls Got a cure for your social disease Follow the law, don't hate the cops Follow the law, don't hate the cops tonight as the election draws nearer uh the temperature is being turned up our first three first little set of stories here our first three stories are about what i'm calling ballot drop box intimidation slumber parties in arizona here's uh just a news hit from uh msnbc about what's going on there and then a hero emerges Dark hours of Arizona nights. What brings you out tonight? Are part of an effort by conservatives to watch, critics say, intimidate voters as they drop early ballots into drop boxes. I suspect there's been squirrely stuff going on for years and years. Those suspicions prompted by scenes like this. Like, we will sleep by those drop boxes. I'm rolling out my sleeping bag. We're not going to let this election be stolen. That's Republican gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake back in May at an Arizona legislative hearing where witnesses tried to cast doubt on Joe Biden's 2020 win in the state, 
among the discredited claims by groups like True the Vote, allegations of fraud by so-called mules who supposedly stuffed ballots into drop boxes. Arizona's Republican Secretary of State, candidate Mark Fincham, praising the group at the time. And all of the people who have contributed to this effort, they are American heroes because they are saving the republic from itself. But the Republican Attorney General Mark Brnovich this month referred through the vote to the FBI and the IRS. His office writing that the group has, quote, not provided us any information, evidence of election fraud in Arizona. At the same time, Arizona's Secretary of State's office has referred six incidents of potential voter intimidation in these parking lots to the FBI for investigation. Some individuals have been armed and masked. So we're going to have people parked out there watching you and they're going to follow you to your car and get your license plate. What is intimidation mean? There's no objective test for intimidation, but it's when the combination of a number of different circumstances come together and create an overall feeling that makes the voter deterred from wanting to vote. Lake on Thursday now urging those watching the drop boxes to not cover their faces. I don't like masks. I think you should, if you're going to do something like that, you should show your face. It's creating an environment that ties up my resources where we just want to make sure that people can vote safely and that you know democracy in, the, in this republic can carry on as it should. Donald Trump himself has now reposted videos and photos on his social media account of new unfounded claims by these Dropbox watchers. And another repost of his included the exact address of one of those Maricopa County Dropboxes. Terrifying. Wow. Terrifying. Yeah, but... At the same time, I kind of expected this to happen, but I don't know. I feel like the cops should just go arrest those people. Yeah, I I feel like I know Arizona is an open carry state, but there's got to be laws about like harassing people when they go to vote. Yeah, and I, wherever they're at, if they're like sleeping in their car, if that was like a poor person doing it, the Arizona police would certainly do something about it, right? So yeah, you know, a lot of the rhetoric I was seeing online was talking about, well, if you, even if you have to sleep, just sleep there with like these stickers on your car or whatever, just to like, so that people like, I guess, know yeah. that you're there. Yeah. But I'm like, just sleep in your house and leave them alone. They're just going like, to drop home. their ballot off. <laughs> it's like, uh, they're not even going to find anybody that's credibly doing this. Like, wh- how will they know that somebody's st- stuffing the ballot? I mean, or, if I if I lived over there, I'd like I'd like look, just look around a lot while I was dropping my ballot off. I'd be like, <laughs> look over my shoulder, but just one ballot with my uh, name on it in my hand. Just look, just yeah. to sketch. Like I'm like I'm doing a crack deal out there or something. <laughs> yeah, you, you might get shot for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Also, I mean, I'm you know um, it's easy well, for it's easy for me to say from here from here in San Jose, where like none of this is going to be a yeah, problem. Yeah. You know. And if they were carrying around a gun, they would be arrested. <laughs> like there's no open carry here. And I feel like they'd yeah. have a very bad time of it. San Jose police, while, while they claim they are understaffed, they sure still do like arresting people. Yeah. Um, um this, this is your, I don't even understand what they think they're doing out there because as soon as they touch your ballot, like, or open it or do anything like that, they have committed a felony. Yep. So what are they doing out there? they're trying to catch they think they're going to catch something but like i'm I'm, i don't even know what they think they're looking for because you like maybe they're trying to see if somebody is like putting multiple ballots in at the same time but you can like put in sealed ballots from other people right each state each state has different laws but i think in almost every state in the union if somebody's a member of your household you can drop off their ballot yeah i mean it's supposed to be sealed and signed before they hand it to you so yeah they know that like it, you didn't tamper with it, but you're allowed to drop it off and people are, are allowed to drop off multiple ballots that if they're the one going by it, you know, like maybe you're, you want to stay home, you know, and, and somebody else just happens to be going by the, the box, they can drop it off for you. Right. It's like any other errand, essentially, if you yeah. live in a household, you t- like if, if I know one of my new roommates is going to the store, I'm not going to fucking schlep to the store. Because I already know they're 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 going already, so I'm like, yeah. hey, can you pick this up and let me know if I owe you any money for it, or if, if we'll just, we'll, or maybe I just pick you up something next time, like, yeah. But this is like no different of an, this is no different than just running to the store and like picking up milk or something. As far as I'm concerned, this is just something right. you do once every few years, and and that's it. I, I 
I wonder if this is only happening because Maricopa County, although it's well known for a Joe Arpaio, Maricopa yeah. County is where is a, is a county where there's a city. It's a liberal place. Right. It, it's a blue right. spot. So I wonder if these uh, ballot watchers with these uh, weapons are only showing up in like cities and kind of blue areas. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. <sighs> anyway, ev- sometimes a hero emerges. And in this case, it's a grandmother. <laughs> okay. Arizona. Two men armed, wearing tactical gear, watching voters. A vigil taking place over multiple nights. Hi, guys. One woman, a Phoenix area grandmother, decided to confront them. Okay. Hey! Wait, they were covering their own license plate with a flag? Yeah, they were. Okay. They don't want you to know who they are. And they then they apparently, to... they apparently assaulted this old lady for going up trying to film them. Wow. Standing up and pushing back against those people and standing up for everybody's right to vote. You don't mind if I set up right here, do you? Without fear of uh, retaliation or any kind of intimidation. Hi, how are you? She asked we you? not show her face because she did this. Went right up in the armed man's face. You know, I, I don't talk. I, I take care of business. I go oh, out damn, Grandma. I have to do. Nice to meet you. I push Hi. back against uh, these kind of people, like people who are intimidating voters. You know, he's spitting that in my face. I'm sitting down. He's with a gun standing over top of me. I'm and I'm standing up and pushing back against those people and standing up for everybody's right to vote without fear of uh, retaliation or any kind of intimidation. I'm just That's sitting strange. here. I'm not even communicating with them. I'm sitting right here. You know, seeing that, you would think you were in, you know, some autocratic nation and not the United States of America. Yo, they like smacked that lady. It looked wow. like. Wow. Because she removed the flag. I, I don't know if she like, if you're allowed to do that. Actually, I don't think you're allowed to cover your license plate, but then she's doing a vigilante justice on the license plate. Well, but you do, that's not the same as hitting somebody. Yeah. Well, I know you can't cover your license plate when the vehicle is moving on public roads. Uh, I th- and I think they're in a public parking lot, so I'm pretty sure they also are not allowed to cover it there. But, the, you know, I don't know the laws. I'm not a lawyer. But, yeah, that's like, what? WTF, right? <laughs> Why are the cops there chasing those guys away if they're doing that sort of stuff? Um, it might, it's, might not technically be illegal to just sit there, but, like, the other, like, I don't know. She was just sitting down there and the cops weren't even between her and the guy. If you noticed, right. The cops were standing yeah. behind the, uh, we'll call them the yeah, Patriots, <laughs> the right. Patriots. So I don't under like, why wouldn't they at least get between them? So that like, so that right. to just try to like deescalate or whatever. Right. The cops should be, should be separating them. Like, yeah, the, I, I don't know. I mean, there, we only saw little bits of it. I did like that her Twitter handle was underscore, underscore, eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine, underscore. So <laughs> pretty cool Twitter handle. But I just don't think like, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. Like they, they shouldn't. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why they, I don't know why they thought. I, I mean, they obviously probably did get away with smacking that lady. Um, yeah whatever i don't know maybe they maybe the one who smacked her got arrested we it's hard to tell the news didn't tell us anything about whether or not that happened because the news is probably just there for the uh sensationalism of the story not to really inform you right right so that's okay though those people were actually there to thank people for voting sure they were that's i'm telling you that's that's what this next that's why they say. they hid their license plate and were wearing like masks that mostly covered their face and tactical gear just thank you it's and tip, we're tip, otherwise trying to hide their face typical typical gear that you wear when you thank people for things yeah yeah it's the thank you it's the thank you fit yes or maybe as the kids say the thank you drip that you know we're out there doing something unlawful we're actually protecting you and i want to say that we're out there protecting your vote Wave at us, say hi, say thank you. We're going to have signs out there starting today, hopefully, that say thank you for voting, because that's exactly why we're there, is to protect your vote. Whether mm-hmm. you're voting Democrat or Republican or uh, Libertarian, Independent, it does not matter. We're here because we love you, and because <laughs> we want to continue to yeah. protect the rule of law. Uh, if you don't believe no. there was any, that's okay. 
some of us do. So no. that's why we're here. We were just there to thank you for voting. We're going to put up signs. You're not allowed to put up signage around those boxes, actually. Any kind of political sign at all. First of all, it's yeah, not your definitely property. Not. Um, but I think there's a distance, right? I, I think it's like other polling places. You have to be a certain distance away. Right, to do any kind of electioneering or um, yeah, any kind of advocacy or whatever. Yeah, I, I think this is going to... This is... We usually don't cover, um, like, we usually don't, like, go live, like, straight up, like, election war room status from this studio for midterms, but I think this time we're probably going to have to do that. Um, there's going to yeah. be a lot going on. I think some bad shit's going to happen. And, um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, the 8th will be, uh, we'll be live here with some coverage. We'll start with down ballot, cover some local elections, and then when down ballot's over, we'll, me and the media ones will sit across from each other and just watch as the the world goes crazier and crazier i suppose speaking of the world going crazier and crazier i have fun news up from alaska sarah palin uh fired her campaign staff and is running her campaign herself now so this ought to be fan fucking tastic <laughs> i couldn't think of a more competent person to run their own campaign than sarah palin I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but sometimes you wonder, the people who are actually advising, working on campaigns, you got to wonder if they're really in it for the right reasons, because sometimes they give really crappy advice and effort. So I'm doing a lot of this myself. I'm not going to ask people for donations, though, which ticks off those in my campaign who um, and other campaigns, you know, because they, they want to get paid the business and they get a cut <laughs> of funds raised. I don't you know, paid for their time. For because I've won all the races that I've been in over my life, except one. <laughs> except the last one. <laughs> oh, and that one time you were a, a vice presidential candidate too, Sarah. That one time you were, that, that, that you didn't win that either. The big one. And uh, I've done it being outspent 10 to 1 or whatever it is. Because, you know, that's just the way I roll. And it's always worked well. <laughs> I feel like she was not outspent 10 to 1 for the vice president one no no i, th I think uh, the obama campaign did outspend the mccain campaign that year but it was certainly but wasn't not 10 to 1 it might have been like by like a few percent 10 percent or right, something right, right. but yeah it was she's like except that one and then she stopped for a minute because she didn't want to she maybe wanted to pretend she was never the vice presidential candidate i don't yeah. know i just know she stopped for a minute and kind of looked out into space i don't know maybe she was just like oh that's right space is there um but they uh she freaking out that the uh um rank choice voting like <laughs> destroyed her campaign. <laughs> she is, she is. And just real quick, Andrew Yang's grifter ass is out there trying to take credit for it. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Did he like mention rank choice like once before? Is that why he's taking credit for it or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's uh he's um you know, he's doing what he does. He's on his current yeah. grift. He's uh, sort of seeming to pivot back towards that, that MRA light thing that he was doing for a while, though, like the future of men and boys thing that he was doing. Um, oh, I think wow. he knows that forward's a dying thing. But like, um, yeah, he definitely tried to take like some credit, even though he had nothing to do with the referendum in uh, Alaska. Right. Like he was, I don't know, he was, he was off running some NFT grift or whatever when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Telling everybody, to um, do, telling everybody to do math or some shit and then talking about IQ. Yeah. I didn't look too deeply into that uh, uh, election, but so I know Palin lost pretty badly, but did other like crazy people lose? Was, did it actually like increase, you know, or did it, did it result in basically moderate type people getting elected? The person who won that race was actually the progressive. Oh, okay. Mind you, an Alaska progressive, so probably moderate by like California yeah. Bay Area standards. Oh, yeah. Probably, probably in your neighborhood, some people might think she's a communist. You know, it just oh, depends yeah, on I'm where sure. you. It just depends <laughs> on where you live, right? But yeah, I, I believe she ran a progressive campaign and um, appealed to like regular people. Rank choice voting is certainly better than the system we have right now, and I do like I do like seeing it. You know, um, if it if it gives us more moderate. Um, winners especially in red states that's good for me even if the more moderate republican comes out ahead because of it it's better for 
people like me who are terrified for the future of our society. Not that yeah. I'm telling anybody that they should ever vote for a moderate Republican. <laughs> I don't like them. Yeah. They're, 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 they're almost as bad. They just don't believe in QAnon. So did you know there's well, an election think, going on for a governor of Florida, Matt? I heard something about that. <laughs> I, I don't um, feel like we even have to endorse. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. We don't, we don't. We don't. It goes without I did saying. not, however, I did not actually watch this debate. Well, I've just got a couple clips from it. Uh, Justin Freakin did some really good coverage of the entire oh, debate the other night. Um, I think I was invited on, but then I forgot or something, or I don't know, maybe I... <laughs> Maybe I think I'm too important to go on other people's channels now and shit. I don't know. Anyway, here's just, just some clips from it. These are in no particular order. These are just clips I gathered uh, over the course of the weekend from the discord from yeah. the debate. Here's the first one. It is, of course, about critical race theory. Of course. But it actually, if you look around the country, they do have programs, unfortunately, where they will take a student, look at their race, say, okay, you're white, you're an oppressor. If you're black, you're oppressed. And think about what that does to a six or seven year old kid. That's <laughs> oh, the fucking thing. Dude, dude shout out to everybody who's teaching. laughing at him. Uh, and actually, his running mate has said this in the past that teaching the United States was built on stolen land. That is inappropriate for our schools. It's not true. Uh, and I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Man. They're just, that's not a laugh track either, is it? I don't think so. The people are just laughing at him. But that's because the debate was held in a city, right? Florida's just like every other state. Well, when you get to yeah, the where city. Did they, what city were they in? Do you know? I don't, I don't recall, but there's no way this debate was held out in the sticks, right? Uh, I'm sure not, but. It was like probably. Like, I don't know if they did in like Tallahassee or did they do it in like. Miami, Orlando, or something like that, because Tallahassee is the, the capital, but not very big and more uh, conservative. But if they did it like in Miami, I I could totally believe everybody laughing at them. Or like Tampa, even people would probably. Yeah, even like, Tampa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, even the Scientologists <laughs> in the audience that came from Clearwater would be like, "Oh, funny joke." <laughs> yeah. So here's the next one. It's on. Um, Charlie Crist is going to go after uh, Ron DeSantis for flying all those people to Martha's Vineyard. Good state congressman i thought what the governor did was a horrible political stunt um you know we have an immigration problem we have a problem at the border we need to secure the border i agree with all of that but it doesn't mean that you use florida taxpayers dollars to charter two jets go to texas lie to people to get them onto planes fly them up to the northern part of our country and and one of them's a one-year-old baby another is a pregnant woman you're willing to use people like that. In this case, they were Hispanics, Venezuelan in particular, and have them as props for your political gain. That's not the way to change policy. You can change policy and do what's right to secure the border by having comprehensive immigration reform. That's what I voted for in Congress. When you were in Congress, you wouldn't do it because you want to keep this issue alive. You want to have it as a wedge issue. And you want to pull political stunts like you did with the taxpayers' dollars of the people of Florida. That's not what it's for. That's not what you should have done. It isn't funny. It's not right. And you were inhumane in how you treated these people. That's time. I, everything he said there was right, except his, he's a little, maybe a little more hawkish on immigration than I would be. But he is trying to get elected in Florida. So Yeah, yeah. You can't run True. a California campaign in Florida. It's kind of weird because... Florida doesn't have like a big border with, uh, you know, Mexico or anything. Right. Uh, we do have people coming from Cuba and I, I don't even think that's happening much anymore. And to the extent they are, a lot of times the, the political right will like use their story as a, like a hammer against communism and socialism. So yeah, they, yeah. Oh, and, uh, it's changing by the way, it is not so, yeah. so, so much the case now that the Republicans can rely on the Cuban vote. Uh, out right. of Miami because that second generation it says they're like well wait a minute no you're assholes actually <laughs> <laughs> also uh in terms of the money that DeSantis used it wasn't like directly taxpayer money it was I think money that came from the federal government for COVID release relief but it wasn't that actual money because they didn't use it or didn't use enough of it and they left it in the bank and it accrued interest and it was the interest that they used to to pay for it because that money didn't have anything attached to it, right? It didn't have a, a particular thing that it had to go to. So that's that's what DeSantis, I believe that's what DeSantis used to to pay for everything. 
but it's still taxpayer money, right? What was that? I can't hear you at all now. It's all good now. Yes. <laughs> it's all good now. Anyways, crazy stuff in Florida. Yeah, definitely crazy stuff. I I mean, I don't care like where he got the money. That's fucking awful. And but not for nothing, it, it in a way backfired on them because the people that were in Martha's Vineyard were, were kind to the people who came. Yeah. And asked yeah. them where they wanted to go. Most of them wanted to go to Boston because they knew there were services for them in Boston. Yeah. But somebody had family in Jersey and they got they got them a train ticket out to Jersey. Because there's a few few bucks floating around there in Martha's Vineyard, and to help those yeah. people was for a lot of the people who live up there to help those people was nothing. It was absolutely yeah, nothing and, to them. And the Republicans were trying to bash him because they they immediately shipped them out of Martha's Vineyard, uh, often because that's a island, right? So they they moved it off, moved them all off the island. And people pointed out, yeah, they don't have any infrastructure to support these people, so they moved them to a place that can handle it. And it wasn't like the people on Martha's Vineyard didn't like give money and give uh, food and support to them while they were there. Right. And they asked them where they wanted to go. And they said yeah. Boston. Yeah. Because they knew it was a big city. Yeah. And the ones who didn't want to go to Boston, if it was on the Eastern Seaboard, they got sent there. So it just, I think it backfired. Like anybody, like moderate Republicans and moderate Democrats, that just, that just turned them off. Turn them all yeah. off to that yeah. to the extent that we have moderates anymore but i certainly yeah. believe somebody more when they tell me that they're a moderate than when they tell me they're a centrist yeah right <laughs> <laughs> i've heard that rant before <laughs> so, well excuse the fuck out of me anyway here's another <laughs> clip this is uh talking about inflation Ron, you talk about Joe Biden a lot. I understand. You think you're going to be running against him. I can see how you might get confused. But you're running for governor. You're running for governor. And I have a question for you. You're running for governor. Why don't you look in the eyes of the people of the state of Florida and say to them, if you're reelected, you will serve a full four-year term as governor. Yes or no? Yes or no, Ron? Will you serve a full four-year term if you're reelected governor of Florida? It's not a tough question. It's a fair question. He won't tell you. Look at him just kind of so, standing there all like, like, like a fucking robot that can't like, I don't know if they're, if he's following, he might be following debate rules and not answering, even though it was a direct quick question. So, uh, but yeah, that was weird. It's, it's like he's, he's the Elon Musk robot. <laughs> yeah. Here's another I don't know. Elon Musk is m more creepy. <laughs> and now apparently he has a sink attachment. Oh God. All right. here's another, they're going to discuss, I guess, critical race theory a little bit more in this next clip here. So he, he talks about not, not teaching about the history of our country that might offend some people in our schools. We ought to teach facts in our schools. <laughs> We ought to teach the truth in our schools. There's an old expression, Ron. Those who don't know history may be condemned to repeat it. Usually people use that in reference to the Holocaust. It could just as easily be referenced to slavery in our country. It happened. It's a fact. We shouldn't have a whitewash approach to educating our children. That's not right. How are they going to do well in life if they don't even know our own history? And we're not going to teach people to hate each other in our schools. I don't know where you get that idea. I don't have hate in my heart. And I don't think we need to be doing that in our schools. Why you think that's happening right now is beyond me. We need to get back on track. We need to apply common sense. We need to do what's right. Yeah, that's the argument against the critical race theory panic. It's like you just don't want us to teach the accurate history of this country. Yep. And I'm glad he went that way instead of trying to say that critical race theory is not taught in uh, lower education, because even though that's true, cause it's, it's just this made up or they're trying to redefine the term. Uh, it tends not to work very well as a retort when what re they're really doing is exactly what he said. Right. Nobody, nobody knows. And like the average voter is like, they're busy. Like they don't have time to like go look up what the fuck critical race theory actually yeah. is just cause some idiot is lying about it. So yeah, go after like the substance of what people are saying. It's much smarter. You go, you know, I just don't think you want us to teach the nasty parts of our country's history. Yeah, pretty much. Like they don't want you know, us to teach about people that. People are busy, but apparently they still have time to watch 10 hours of Fox news every day. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, maybe that's not who that message was for though. Right. Right. <laughs> that message wasn't for the Fox viewer. That message was for somebody who's got some kids and a job and running around yeah. doing their errands and like just living, living the American dream or whatever it is and trying, you know, not, not hyper political but definitely, but wants to, wants to like have, have what's right going on or whatever, wants to vote the right way if they, if they can. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, we got our last one. This one's about abortion because of course it's about abortion. I'm proud of the 15 weeks that we did. I know Charlie Crist opposes that, even though the baby is fully formed, has a heartbeat, can feel pain, and can suck their thumb. He also supports sex-selective abortions, which is used to discriminate against little girls. He supports dismemberment abortions, where they literally will tear the baby limb from limb. And he supports taxpayer funding of That's abortion fine, all the way up until the moment of birth, and that is wrong. I mean, I don't know much about Charlie Crist, but I don't. I think some of that stuff's highly inflammatory and very likely untrue. Yeah. Um, uh, a little disappointed they don't have his uh, rebuttal. I think it's the last video we have, right? Yeah, it is the last video. I just, I just grabbed what clips I had. I grabbed. Yeah, I know. This uh, week's docket arrangement is not my finest performance. That's why I'm giving <laughs> everybody two hours of it. <laughs> Um, up next, we got, we got Mr. Oz on the uh, debate stage Dang. and he's going to talk about how it's actually not really, wasn't actually his responsibility in any sort of meaningful way to, uh, vet the, uh, people who came on his show to try to huck their fucking scam <laughs> medical products. <laughs> Sorry, not my responsibility. It was just my TV show with my name on it. Everybody first mr oz did you or your company make a profit from prom Ooh, that guy called him mr oz fuck yeah <laughs> he follows me on twitter Holding those products you have 30 seconds i never sold weight loss products as as described in those commercials it's a it's a television show like this is a television show so people Wait, can what? run commercials on the shows and that's a perfectly appropriate and very tr a transparent process i ruffled a lot of feathers on my show because i told people the truth and i'm proud of that i'll do the exact same thing no, as a u.s senator oh. but the okay that's not what what he was accused of and he just the accusation He's, was that he had people on his show. Right. And he did. He had lots of people on his show. Well, he either had people on his show or he actually like covered products. Like they have clips of him doing this. Like it's not, you can't say that it was an advertiser like doing, it was just an advertisement between clips of his show. It, it was on his show. Right. The, I mean, I guess you could call it product placement, but I, these were like interviews sometimes with the yeah. people who had created a revolutionary weight loss product. Yeah. I mean, stuff that was obviously a scam, right? Maybe not at the, maybe not at the time, but this, the, I think the one they were talking about, there's a real famous one where the fucking thing, I think it was, was it Fen Fen that he was uh, advertising or something. Oh, that's a little different. <laughs> I think, I mean, that actually worked, but it just also killed you. Right. <laughs> sometimes. I'm not a hundred percent sure it was Fen Fen, but I think it was something like, like that where it, the harm it did to people was like, so obvious that it was like pulled from the shelves yeah. and then he, he never was like really dangerous. Then he never like addressed it later. Of course. Like if we took advertisements here and then I found out something that adver we were advertising on the show was making people sick. I would devote yeah. like the upfront of, I'd have to probably talk about it on uh, Wednesday. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> the one that people actually download, <laughs> but I yeah. feel bad about it. And this guy apparently doesn't feel bad about having somebody on to huck a product that killed people. Right. So I guess vote for him. Well, I, don't I, know. I mean, I thought I saw clips of him selling other stuff that was like, that wasn't that sort of thing. It was something else that was just obviously a weight loss scam. Right. Well, you had a lot of that stuff on a lot of alternative medicine. I mean, he just on had there. tons of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff was just the same stuff that like Alex Jones sells and the same stuff that Goop yeah. sells yeah. just with a different brand name on it. Yeah. Because you get these kind of white label Super. products, you get these white label like scam products yeah. from overseas and you do, you then label them yourself with your brand. Right. So it, it was one of the funniest things that I ever saw was somebody comparing the Goop store and the Infowars store and then comparing the marketing from yeah. the Goop store and the Infowars store. But it turned out that a lot of it was the same products. Same stuff with different label. But the same, same medical claims being made about it, right? Just yeah. a different target audience, different marketing style and a different, different kind of person. Even the super male vitality pills. 
I don't remember if that was one of the crossover ones, but I do know the iodine was one of them, and a, yeah. one that was specifically marketed to women was one of them. Okay. I don't know if the male vitality one was because uh, that's not Gwyneth's audience, so I don't think it would be in, right. her, in her financial interest to market. But she may have had the same product called something else because it's just herbs, herbs, as Alex would say. <laughs> a lot of that stuff is like, I mean, it's effectively a placebo. There's nothing in it that's gonna, you know, either do anything or cause harm. Uh, I forget what they, there's something specific they put in it that's real famous. Since like all of those diet pills, like have them or not diet pills, but all of the supplements have it that just does nothing so this week marjorie the gathering went on a call-in show (laughs) called night talk it's like a local show for her district i don't think i don't remember if it was public access i think it might even be public access but it didn't go super well for her (laughs) really you you talk about the the uh women's rights okay you're blaming this all on the women my body is my body and i want i don't want the government telling me what i can do with my body ma'am are you having children anytime soon i'm um, that's my question i'm asking a legitimate question and you're right it's your body but a baby inside a woman's womb is another person's body not your body and not my body and that uh, abortion is murder of another human being whether that body is inside your uterus or, or not. But that is murder. I, I do not support the murder of another human being. I support life, and I will always stand up to fight for the lives of the unborn and, and life overall. Um, okay. But I don't, I don't think you're having children anytime soon. So I appreciate your interest in women's rights, but killing an unborn baby is not a woman's right, and that's not health care. Okay. If a child, if a, the 10-year-old child that was, that was the rape... What about then I think we should put the rapist, the a child Man's abuser. Be punished. The child can't have anything done to her without uh, the government going after them, fining them and all that stuff. That's not right. A child abuser and a rapist should be put to death if they are doing that to a 10-year-old child. Number one, I think that should be our focus. That is a very rare, rare, rare occasion. But we already do that. Well, yeah, I mean, I have other issues with that, but yeah. (laughs) So that should not be the the entire premise of the argument on abortion. Again, ma'am, I know you say it's your body, your choice, but I don't think you're having any children anytime soon. I think we need to focus. So She's basically saying an old lady can't have uh, an opinion on this, and an old lady should shut the fuck up, right? Yeah, that's part of what she's saying, definitely. Well the future of america and that's our children if i was running against her i'd run that ad in the parts of her district where the most retired people live and go marjorie taylor green thinks that if you're over if you're past menopause that you don't get to have an opinion (laughs) right yeah that's a that'd be a powerful ad she's still gonna win but she's gonna take a lot of damage in this this cycle because they are our they are our future and the unborn they're the, our future also so let's focus on protecting their lives and and instead of being focused on a lie that abortion is women's health care because that's not health care health care saves lives abortion kills a life thank you so much for your question abortion Bye. saves no, I'm lives not as I'm well okay. focus on the fact that you Oh, she's like, I'm not, uh, I wish we would have got more of that because that lady did not like Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> <laughs> we have another clip. <laughs> oh, I do. Oh, a different one. All the ad time during this was bought up by her opponent. <laughs> 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 so here's one of the ads that was run like, dur- like during, because I, it was either like a small local outlet or even um, like, uh, it might even been like uh, public access TV. So ad time wasn't expensive. Uh, public access, you wouldn't have, uh, ads on here. Okay. So maybe it was a small, it was a small local outlet. Yeah, I well, used here's to do here. stuff for a public access TV station and, um, they have pretty strict rules about that sort of thing and they don't really have ads. Well, here's one of the ads that ran during the, uh, during her call in show. I'm Daddy Marcus Flowers. Marcus Flowers. Marcus Flowers. Marcus Flowers. I'm Marcus Flowers and I approve this message. Okay. We're back with that Marjorie Tyler Green. You all ran them off. She's yeah. gone. Why'd you do that? She's gone. So uh, she she left. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take your calls or comments or whatever you got to say, but uh, she left. 
she said she enjoyed the show and she's through and got up and left. So she's out of here. Nothing I can do about that. Okay. Call her. Go ahead. <laughs> wow. Can't take the heat, huh, Marge? Can't shoot everybody. So what am I even doing here? <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Like old ladies were calling her to give her what for and all the ads were for her opponent. She's like, what? <laughs> she didn't even think to like run her own ads during the, uh, during the appearance. That's what I'd immediately inquire about. Is it, is it, I'd have to ask, like, is it getting, can I run my own ads during this? Right. Yeah. Well, we got more of Marjorie, the gathering. This is, or she's on the Steve Bannon show and she's going to vow revenge against companies that just, I guess, aren't giving money to Republican candidates. Sounds like extortion. Corporations, the corporations have, have anything to fear from a, uh, from a populist house, ma'am. Well, let's just put it like this, Steve, all these big corporations, you know, you know what they did after January 6th? Um, that didn't affect me because I don't take their money anyways. I don't take any corporate money. I don't take any, uh, any lobbyist money. I don't need it. I'm supported by the American people gratefully. Thank I would love to see a fact check of that claim. God, I am. <laughs> I, I, that, and that's how I want to keep it. But you know what they did after January 6th, Steve? They stopped donating. They stopped all the lobbyists, all the big corporations stopped donating to a whole bunch of my Republican colleagues that they used to donate to they said oh no we can't support you because of the the big lie or whatever they want to call it so i want you to know and this is something that they should all know that's not going to be forgotten by a whole bunch of my republican colleagues um because that was really ridiculous and wrong but yeah there is going to be investigation corporations the corporations have have anything to fear it just started itself over that's weird um that's crazy talk yeah, I mean, I've heard something similar before, but yeah, I mean, going after corporations because they they didn't donate to you, that's not that's not cool. Uh, although I think technically it said that they stopped giving to the GOP, but that's probably because GOP has been going crazy. And right after right after January 6th, like so much stuff was up in the air. They didn't want to continue to give money to somebody and then come to find out that person was like, helping organize what happened on January 6th. Right. And a lot of yeah. the companies, a lot of the companies out of an abundance of caution just stopped giving period. Right. It, it wasn't that they just started, they kept giving to Democrats and stopped giving to Republicans. A lot of the companies just stopped giving altogether yeah. while they figured out what was going on. And I, if I were, if I ran a big company, well, I don't know, I'd be a very different person than I am, but I think that would be the smart, <laughs> small C conservative move to make as the head of a head of a major corporation. Right. Be to just like, hold on, hold on. Just, we gotta we gotta stop giving to uh national politics. Yeah. Until we figure out what the fuck's going on here. So that's not a super it's not a super surprising thing. So up next we got Tucker Carlson. He did a special where his crew was his crew was embedded with um a friend of Peter Thiel. Uh, Blake Masters embedded with his uh, Blake Masters campaign because that's what you do as a news organization. You just run, you basically uh, create uh, commercials actually for candidates. That's that's how you journalism. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> that's exactly what you do when you journalism. Here we go. This is designed to kill people. Wait, 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 what? Whoa! He said that. Psychopaths are running the country right now. I had consultants that told me, Blake, we never want you to say anything unplanned. And I literally just laughed at him. You know, it's like, that's not going to work. AK-47, when you absolutely, positively have to kill every last motherfucker in the room. Whoa. I'm Kyle Kirkhoff. I don't really have a formal title, but I volunteer for the campaign. Blake and I have been best friends for like 15 years. I help a lot with... The videos, the ads. Um. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. Um, I don't feel like a guy who worked for Founders Fund, that's Peter Thiel's big venture capital firm, was ever in many yeah. situations where he was absolutely going to have to shoot every motherfucker in the room. <laughs> Hopefully not. I don't feel like that was part of his uh, work experience. Um, his previous, yeah. <laughs> we can even call being a venture capitalist work. Um, 
I just don't, I don't feel like that's uh, really something that he ever experienced. It's clearly an astroturfed campaign. He's clearly a Silicon Valley guy. And there's no, there's just absolutely no way that that's like who he is like, or like, yeah, he's just doing this because he knows that that's the way to rile up the Republican base. That gun shit. I bet the guy, he may have fired guns before, but I bet the guy's not a, not a gun guy. Yeah. Here we go. Pennsylvania state Senator Doug Mastriano uh, takes a question about anti-Semitism at an event. And, um, it doesn't really go very well. Um, they just go to like the standard Republican talking point on um, on Jewish folks. Actually, here you go. Okay. Your rivals, Jewish school, and previous associations you had with Gab the social network. Yeah. So. Well, I, I would like to make a comment Please. on that real quick. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to say as a family, we, we so much love Israel. In fact, I'm going to say we probably love Israel more than a lot of Jews do. I have to say that. Because, Whoa. And the reason why I say that is because um, I've given and Doug, have, we've given for, I would say, at least 10 years to outreach to Israel and Jerusalem. Um, we have, I have visited um, Israel, we say for five years. We're just an average family. We're not wealthy, wealthy people. We say did she just say she stayed for five years? Sounds like you're wealthy. I thought she said she visited five years. Like, so every, every year for five years, she's visited for some period of time. That still sounds like wealth. That's you're not poor, but <laughs> yeah. So through the lens of the, these people, the only way to support uh, Jews, Jewish folks is to support the gov the nation state of Israel. She yeah, says, that's not, yeah, and she said we love Israel more than a lot of Jewish people do. Well, in America, probably, yeah, because you do polling. Jewish people in America, not the biggest fans of the Likud party over there in Israel, actually. Yeah, yeah. Ten, tends not to be. Ten, they especially like reform they, because there's a few, you know there's a couple different strains of Judaism. As with Christianity, there's basically right. Orthodox, conservative, and reform. And even in the, the ones that call themselves conservative, that's not the kind the numbers that that lady would probably expect in the reform Jews. They're, they don't, uh, uh they're mostly secular people who, yeah. and they don't, they are not fans of Benjamin Netanyahu or the home party or the Likud party. And, but that's the anti, that's what she just did is anti-Semitic. Yeah. It's iffy, but yeah. When you start suggesting that you're like basically a better Jew than the Jewish oh, people true. because you support fucking Israel, you're Good being point. quite anti-Semitic. <laughs> Good point. And I know that's not what she said, but that's like the implication, right? That, that like that's very close to what she said, <laughs> right? And you don't, you can, in fact, I and mean, it, it drives me nuts. And I get into arguments with fucking good, well-meaning shit libs actually on Twitter all the time about this. You can be very much against anti-Semitism and very much against the the actions of a nation state. Yeah. You like, I just asked them, I asked them, I'm like, well, if people don't like what America is doing, are they anti-Christian? Are they bigoted against Christians? Cause that's the, you know, at least symbolically the religion of this country, even though they're no longer the largest group. Oh, it's different. That's different. All right, dude, that's different. Sure. Just, just let people criticize other countries. You can criticize any country on the planet and you're not a bigot because if you just keep it, keep it on the policy that you don't like, you're fine. Keep it on the field. Don't worry about that shit. But those bit, those people, and they're mostly like, well, what we like Christian kind of end times. People are the biggest supporters of groups like APAC because they think the fucking world's going to end in Israel and shit. I also think that might be a little anti-Semitic, but because that's certainly not what the Jewish people believe. So the, yep. here we go. Up next, we got a clip. John Stewart is back, which I thought was going to go yep. really poorly because of a couple things he said a little while back about uh, so-called cancel culture. But not only did he walk back those things he had said about cancel culture after talking to some people, one of which being Kara Swisher, um, since yeah. then he's just been fucking doing what he used to do. And yeah, he's got a, a new show. I think it's on uh, Apple TV. The problem with John Stewart. I've watched a few episodes. They're pretty good. 
Yeah, it's like very standard kind of regular liberal liberal stuff, but it's all fact based. And he's willing to talk to people that are lying and tell them that they're lying. <laughs> so yeah. and we're missing that people, people, yeah. have, people have kind of they do the civility porn shit where you're they they think it's horrible to tell somebody that they're lying and it's not right. Yeah. Because if they're lying, maybe people who are watching a very popular show should know that that person is lying. So here's John Stewart um, talking with, I believe, uh, yep, Arizona's Attorney General. He was in a clip we watched earlier. I'm going to talk to him about the about uh, the 2020 election and upcoming elections. Right now, we have about. I think almost 20 criminal cases related to the 2020 election. Out of 4 million votes. Yeah, no, I, I'm talking in facts, John. But the reality is, is there are millions of people, not only in Arizona, but people throughout this country that think the election is stolen. There's people that believe in angels, but that doesn't mean you launch an oh, investigation see, that angels changed but, ballots. Like, but, 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 a bit of a tautology. When you have a former president spreading rumors yeah. to his supporters, for instance, Trump can say, 74,000 mail-in ballots received that were never mailed, magically appearing ballots. 168,000 fraudulent ballots printed on illegal paper. 36,000 ballots illegally cast by non-citizens. Now, the truth is, none of that was real. When it first came out, the cyber ninja said Joe Biden won Arizona. And then they got a lot of pushback and then they started hedging and hawing. And then next thing you know, people were like, well, Brnovich needs to do something about it. And then it was like, a hot mess. But you've responded by doing things about it. You've what I've done said is, you're still investigating. We've run it. We've run a lot of the stuff to ground. And when, I, I, and I, when I, you get it to ground, will you come out and say Donald J. Trump is wrong? The election in Arizona was fair, not stolen, and not fraudulent. I, I, I have always been a straight shooter, and once no, once all the facts and evidence are in, John, John, come on, man, I'm telling you, I, you have found no evidence that the election in Arizona was fraudulent or stolen from Donald Trump. Donald Trump lost Arizona, period. I've said that from the very beginning. There have been isolated incidences thus far that we've identified yes. and we are prosecuting. Yes. We still have some active investigations going on, but people but can draw the their main, own conclusions. There is we, no, no, people cannot draw their own conclusions. There, there That's is, the point of the law. Yeah, it is. The law is that you have facts, Right. And you have fiction. Right. The fact is, the election in Arizona was well run, not fraudulent, and not stolen from Donald Trump, according to even your investigation. I, I have never said. Why is it, it so hard to just say yes to that? I just, I guess because I've spent my entire, most of my career as a prosecutor, and we still have some ongoing cases. Let so in way. your mind, John. you still feel like after all this, you're going to discover no. a concerted effort to steal the election from Donald Trump and, and that it was fraudulent. Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. So why can't you say the election in 2020 was not stolen or fraudulent? I will tell you this. As I said, this I, is blowing my is mind. Is it really? <laughs> it does do good, some good uh, interviews. I mean, I don't, I don't know what these people think they're going to get. I bet they fucking because of their media thing, they probably saw that weird shit he said about cancel culture, and they're like, "Oh, John Stewart's actually gonna like give me a fair shake, whatever the right. fuck they think that means." But then, yeah, <coughs> you weren't here a couple weeks ago. We talked to um, somebody I believe in Arkansas that were about trans people, and he just kept telling yeah. them that everything they were saying was wrong, and that everything that they were saying was like against the um the recommendations of the American Pediatric Association, the American Psychiatric Association, the American something of psychologists. Like he just listed off all of these fucking organizations. <laughs> and they're like, well, there are people that dissent from that. And he's like, well, there's people that dissent from everything. It was really good. You know, he's not, yeah. you know, I wish these people, I wish some of these people would sit down with an actual trans person to have right. these kinds of discussions. But short of that, it's at least somebody's going to go in there and be like, you're wrong. And do it on a popular yeah. show at better than nothing, better than nothing. And, um, you know, people can have their differing opinions and, uh, John Stewart will tend to try to go down the middle sometimes, 
But on shit like this, where it's just so obvious that the person is spewing out a bunch of incorrect stuff, he's really good about not only telling them that they're wrong, but then laughing in their face. <laughs> because that's, that's an important part. Laughing in someone's face is important. Yeah. So we got next, we got uh, two, a tale of two different coverages of the break in at the Nancy Pelosi's home. First, Fox News. Okay. Oh, great. Get more. Yeah, you know, as we mentioned uh, earlier in the hour, uh, 2021 Capitol Police uh, fielded 9,600 threats against members of Congress between January 1st and January 23rd of this year, nearly 2,000 threats that they looked into. Uh, but but when, you, when you look at this in the overall, uh, people may be quick to make leaps to certain events in the past, uh, certain political ideologies, what may have driven this person. We, we, we can't make those leaps and we shouldn't make those leaps because we just don't know at this point that this person could have been uh, motivated I think by it's just pretty fair. We can make some leaps. And at, at this point, when this was airing too, people had already found this guy's social media. Oh, okay. <laughs> of so, course. We don't know. Yeah, I mean, the only indication we have is the where's Nancy or that he was waiting for. Literally, they were yelling that in the halls on January 6th, you dumb fuck. Yeah. That's one of the things they were yelling in the halls of Congress on January 6th. Brett Bayer knows that. Yeah. Nancy, but we don't know his his point of view. Um, We do know that this is... You know, a real thing in today's day and age that public figures, no matter who they are, uh, come under increasing threat. And because of our environment and the way it's uh, we talk about things online and elsewhere, uh, there has been an increasing threat to public figures. Uh, And it's interesting about this. I, I agree with your previous guest as well about the security prospect of the speaker's house when her husband is home. Um, I. I would have thought that it would be more secure as well, Mm -hmm. but we don't have all the details yet. Obviously, in a moment where uh, crime is a major issue all across America, right, Brett? There's a lot of people. Oh, no, she pivoted to crime is on the uprise. These are people that don't know how to fucking zoom out on a graph. Crime has been on such a, a fucking consistent downtrend for the last 30 years in this country that right. any little blip up you can zoom in on that shit and it looks like a crime wave but it's not right you just zoom out on the fucking map like i think there was one year recently where the average global temperature went down by like 0.1 degrees and everybody's like look global cooling and i'm like oh stop it oh stop yeah they it. do that every time it's, it's zoom it's just it's uh, it's unwillingness to zoom out on a graph to see yeah. like the larger picture well no i mean it's it's focusing it's cherry picking data right so they're Focusing on the data that supports their conclusion. And not for nothing, like when you talk about like violent crime going up, you think about San Jose in 2021, there were 28 murders in a city of over a million, right? Yeah. That is a, an unfathomably low, low crime rate for somebody. If somebody was talking about that in 1996, right? They'd be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And then, so (laughs) If it goes up to like 34, that's six more murders. Yeah. We don't like those six more murders, but you think about the percentage, it went up by like a quarter. Yeah. Or, you know, somewhere in the range, something, something yeah. like that. 15%. Yeah. And that's a, that seems like a big jump, but then you're like, well, wait a minute. No, this is one of the safest cities on the planet and it still right. is. Right. And so, you know, if, if violent crime had been on a down is on a downtrend, and just a little blip up, it's not going to take a lot of violent crime for it to be like a, a big percentage jump in some of the places where it went down to almost like not almost nothing, but it went down so dramatically like like what happened in San Jose from the 90s to the the, the mid 2010s and beyond. Yeah. And so, yeah, you, you're it's cherry picking or I just call it the inability to zoom out on a graph. <laughs> so that was Fox's coverage of the uh, break in. And assault and battery with a deadly weapon at the Pelosi home. Um, Yeah. Now here's CNN's coverage. It's going to be a little bit different. And this wasn't, they were around the same time. Okay. This particular suspect was posting these conspiracy theories on social media on platforms like Facebook about COVID vaccines, the 2020 election, about January 6th. And of course, there is sort of this 
conspiracy theory cloud that continues to hang over our political discourse right now. Yeah, and look, our team, our CNN investigative team, has gone over a number of these conspiracy theories in which he was posting. Evan mentioned some of them, but some of them also <clears throat> are things that we are hearing still on the campaign trail today. One of them that he posted was about uh, the My Pillow uh, CEO, uh, Mike Lindell, uh, saying that the uh, 2020 election was stolen. He posted apparently multiple videos uh, from the My Pillow CEO uh, making that false uh, claim that we hear the former president make, and as well as some others. He also posted uh, some apparently some transphobic images uh, he linked uh, websites uh, falsely saying that the COVID vaccines were deadly. Uh, he w attacked the January 6th uh, committee and also uh, went after uh, George Floyd, of course, who was uh, killed by a Minnesota police officer, uh, Derek Chauvin. He criticized uh, that conviction of, as, as a modern lynching. So these are the kinds of uh, the, the theories and worldviews that he was espousing online. 42-year-old uh, David DePepe, who the police identified as a very different coverage yeah it's almost like they did some research into the guy they 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 looked yeah <laughs> they took a look all right uh we got maybe one or two more stories before we take a quick break so that i can uh, go to the bathroom and get myself more caffeine we're doing an extended version of the podcast this week um anyway up next you know about peter teal's uh dating site uh no it's called the right stuff oh <laughs> this I think is i've heard about it yeah this is a real ad from from really from the right it's a real ad this is not a joke this is a real ad for the right stuff um and that's all i'm gonna say before we run this <laughs> options hinge where you're prompted to add your pronouns and you can be accused of misgendering while trying to flirt bumble where you're forced to pledge allegiance to causes you don't believe in or you have to sort through 33 gender options 33 gender options or tinder well see for yourself i'm a blogger and i'm transgender I'm a full-time model and I identify as male. I'm a DJ and a philanthropist and I'm a female gender. I'm a makeup artist, cosmetic trainer. I identify as male for now. Now maybe this works for some of you and that's fine. But if you're looking for something different, we created an alternative, the right stuff, where you're going to meet quality, like-minded people, where the trolls are kept out because it's invite only, and where you can be yourself oh, safe space. without beliefs being forced on yep. you. This is actually the least political dating app. So let's get back to normal. <laughs> Take a chance and download the. <laughs> so not for nothing. Yeah. Uh, Chad is saying that like no women showed up on this dating app. If anybody is surprised that Peter Thiel's dating app doesn't have a lot of women on it. I got news for you about Peter Thiel. <laughs> <laughs> I got news for you about Peter Thiel. Uh, he's, you know, he's a gay man and that's a fine thing to be. I think so because I am one, but also because it's, even if I wasn't one, I would hope that I would think that's a fine thing to be. Um, Matt, you're a straight man. Is being a gay man a fine thing to be? It's fine. Is being Doesn't Peter Thiel a, is being Peter Thiel a fine thing to be? Being Peter Thiel is not a fine thing to be. <laughs> we can, we can, we can separate these out a little bit. Yeah, he supports that. Cool. He supports that Blake Masters guy who uh, didn't block me when I called him one of Teal's twinks. Cause that's what people were calling all the youngster young men that were working at a founders fund for a while. Cause he yeah. was hiring, he was hiring people that, you know, had a, they looked a certain way. Right. So we'll do one more before we take the break here. Um, we'll do our palate cleanser before the break. This is a really okay. great political ad. This is a much better ad than the ad we just watched. This is, uh, it's about, abortion access. You live a busy life. The last thing you want to have to worry about is your birth control pill. That's why we're introducing Orthoestrin, a new low-dose daily birth control pill with little to no side effects. Ask your doctor if birth control is right for you. Then ask your boss if birth control is right for you. Ask your boss to ask his priest. <laughs> Find a boy scout and see what he thinks. 
tap a mailman on the shoulder. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Um, Tell him you didn't mean to startle him. Then ask him if birth control is right for you. Put it online and see how many likes it gets. Come on. Ask an old black man and an Asian boy playing chess in the park. Can I start this new birth control? Then ask them how they became friends because there has just got to be a story there. I'm trying to get birth control and I'm Ask someone ask who just got one of those cochlear implants and is hearing for the very first time. <laughs> yeah, but can, can I get birth control? Ask Jeeves. I'm supposed to ask you Ask your mom's new boyfriend. Then ask the Supreme Court. Finally, ask yourself why you insist on having sex for fun. Hey, no refills? I have to go through all this again next month? Yep. See you then. <laughs> Can I have a gun? Yep. <laughs> Remember, that's your right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a, a Comedy Central ad. It was, it was pretty yeah. funny, and that that was we needed we needed a bit of a good laugh here. Uh, everybody, we're gonna take a quick break. I need to use the bathroom, and um, we usually don't do the the podcast part of the show for two hours. Um, yeah. The song I'm gonna play, I've been playing it a little bit lately. This is by the legendary San Jose band NVS. The song is called Then Gwen. In October of 2000. Four, I think. No, no, it was October fourth. I don't know what year it was. Uh, Gwen Arujo was uh, tragically murdered in Newark, California, not very far from where I lived, and uh, she's been immortalized by Walter and the band NVS. If you're interested in the story, there's a podcast called California True Crime that did a five part episode on it, and they did a very good job of covering it. Um, we're not that kind of podcast, so I can't recommend that podcast enough. And um, yeah, we'll be back in just a couple minutes with the rest of this shit show of a docket. Be right back. I see true beauty in you. It surely terrifies me. But no, I might be one of them. In pieces you hear It isn't natural It's been a gay old lesbian Searching for Craig's Listenlessly A picture is a whore Reference of fetishes to decide Perfect to see things equally The less I'm man than I am The less a woman in your eyes
That was then Gwen by NVSI. Uh, everybody should look up what happened to Gwen Arujo. Also in that song, it was pretty cool. He snuck in the names of almost a dozen uh, gay bars and clubs in the lyrics, uh, a lot of which have been <laughs> shut down since. But I, I remember them because around the time this happened, I was in my early 20s and going out a lot. So pretty cool. Pretty good lyric work by our friend Walter. That's the band NVS out of San Jose, California. And um, glad they decided to uh, use that song to immortalize uh, Gwen Rujo. Anyway, back to the content here. We're going to talk about, um, I guess, uh, now the homeless are boasting about having access to working washing machines. This is on the five, because of course it is. All right, on to the topic. Homeless encampments in liberal Los Angeles have a brand new amenity, working washing machines. Yes, it's true. Vagrants are setting up oversized tents and boasting about how they oversized water tents and electricity from the city in order to power their own. Oversized tents. Like what size tent does she think they should use? Is she a tent expert? You know, one of those tents that are just barely big enough to like fit somebody in, you know, <laughs> lying down. Street laundry service. And in California's <laughs> other beleaguered liberal city, San Francisco, a widely criticized plan to build a single $1.7 million public toilet could be going down the drain. Governor Gavin Newsom threatening to withhold the like public toilet like they have in all over right. Europe. Jesse's fiscal responsibility. Yeah, that was a big primetime victory. Yeah, when people go to Europe, they like come back and talk about how clean it is and how they can go actually go do their business in a public toilet. Right. Like in a city. Yeah, that's crazy. Because we've been pushing hard against this toilet. Yep, it's going to be three years to complete a single stall public restroom, uh, not made of gold. It is a regular toilet and it's costing about $2 million. Outrageous. Outrageous, but we're going to get that cleaned up. Um, the situation in, was it Los Angeles? I don't know about the price, but it is San Francisco, so it's really expensive there. Right, you got to pay everybody for it. You got to yeah. find the plot of land for it. There's regulation, and the toilet has to be fucking indestructible. Yeah, not because yeah. like oh, homeless people are going to use it. It's drunk people are going to use it. People who aren't paying attention yeah. are going to use it. Tourists are going to use it. Like everybody's going to use it. So it has to be accessible to people in wheelchairs. It has to be. Ex mm -hmm. uh, it has to be self cleaning. It has to be durable to survive weather. Um, not that San Francisco gets a lot of bad weather, but uh, it's by the sea, so it has to not rust. Like there are all kinds of right. things you have to consider, and if it's if it's well built, it, it being expensive isn't surprising. Yeah. Rock bottom, because then they bounce back up. Democrats want to make rock bottom comfortable. Yeah, stay at rock bottom. You know, put a washer dryer. Put a wine a fridge in there. Yeah, do whatever you need to do. Spread out. Spread yourself out. That's the problem. You're actually hurting people by letting them fester in squalor. Don't sit there and let them do this to you because you're not allowed to sleep on public property and you're not allowed to sleep on private property. So get them the hell out of there. One of the huge problems with the well, then you're what are you what are you supposed to do? A bunch of meth and never sleep uh, in some of these places <laughs> is that they allow tents. I mean, where are they supposed to go? Like, that's, basically, like, you're basically they just want to criminalize all homeless people. Right. But then they'd complain about all the money that was spent putting them in jail too well no yep. that's no nope, so, no nope, wait a minute that's money spent that they never complain about over there on fox news <laughs> yeah Stay there. well you know they have to change that that zoning those ordinances yep. those municipal ordinances uh but you know i'm going to go back to the 1.7 million single stall toilet in san francisco I want to know. I wish I were the DA in San Francisco. I want to know how much corruption, how many people got paid off, who got paid off to approve it at the zoning board, who got paid off to approve the bid, who got the bid, who's getting the plumbing, who's getting this contract. I mean, I would love it. Just let me do one case. That's an outrage. Oh. But they don't let you bring box wine to the DA's office in San Francisco, Janine. Right now, back to your, what was your question? <laughs> no, that's okay. We're on, the, on the encampments, I think you made the point. Yeah, they have that to change have to, the law. To, because tents are, it's just, they're it's acceptable. A, we're lucky in New York that, that that's, it's against the law and they enforce it. Yes, yes. It's, uh, um, but, excuse me. Sure. You can get them, <laughs> you can get them for um, um, uh, criminal, not, not stolen property, for using the electricity, yes. the water. You can prosecute them for that. Unless they have permission from the municipality, they can't use that water, right. or that electricity. Because that's just another okay. way to steal from the tax. Didn't they say that that's uh, what was happening? Kind of like, They're you know, being you know, given nice public access? Right. They, 
so they showed a washing machine that was on the side of the, the sidewalk or whatever. Yeah. I don't even know if it was hooked up to anything. And if, if it was, maybe somebody in the community was like, yeah, you can run a line off my hose to run, to wash your clothing. Yes. Right. Cause there's not just like city water hookups everywhere that you can just tap into and then get arrested for it. <laughs> right. Right. Bathrooms within months are destroyed, and they're destroyed by the homeless. The, the, what upsets me, and I, in, in, in a clumsy way, Jesse touched on it. <laughs> um, you could say that about pretty much everything. Yes. Um, this idea of compassion creates this problem. It's false compassion. It's a phony virtue signal, and it prevents the necess- necessary steps that are needed to get these people off. The but floor. wait a minute. No, a public bathroom in a downtown area where no one lets you pee isn't there for the unhoused it's there for the community for the tourists for everyone right they have a few of them in downtown san jose they're not like luxurious but they've been there for fucking ever and they're clean when you go in them yeah sometimes they smell a little bit of ammonia even you're like i gotta get out of here (laughs) but they're big they're made of steel you can't destroy them they're not fucked up they've been there since i moved to san jose the same ones that this is this is just incorrect. They don't get destroyed. They're indestructible. Everything in there is made of stainless steel. You would need yeah. to bring a lot of tools in there if you wanted to do any real damage to the fucking thing. <laughs> and things are like not screwed in either. They're like well, it's like spot welded and stuff. They're very permanent. You can't like fuck them up. Right. Street. So their idea of compassion is languishing on the street, overdosing, uh, becoming victims of violence, turning tricks, whatever it is. We have to understand that affordable housing and shelters is not going to help for people who choose to live outside society. The only so you're for you're for low low cost or free public housing and uh, shelter access for every everyone. Greg, are you for that? Of course they're not. No, of course not. Of course. It's- it's just a prop that he's getting. He's just going to well, show I mean, you a little he's, prop. He's for the, the free housing that comes with uh, throwing him in jail. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> what, are you, what are you in for, uh, poor? Yeah. What a disgusting thing. What a fucking disgusting thing. The thing we can do is create an area where they can live outside society. Well, actually, my way wasn't clumsy. It was concise. After <laughs> listening to your explanation. <laughs> Carol, would you like to talk about the toilet? Or the washing machine. Talk about uh, Jesse. your family history. Yeah. If you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, I'm torn on this too. I mean, I, I think we all. No, no one wants anyone to be homeless, and I don't think anyone is wanting to to live on the street. And no one has said that. Well, I think people they do, do, do want to live on the street. They do no, want to live on the street. I talked to them. With it. Yeah. Well, well, I think I think. Well, I know I don't, and I don't okay, know. If, I don't know of anybody that that's because you're do. normal. Right, but I, but I think they're normal people who fall in the hard times. This that's is true. not the answer. That's not what I'm saying. He's got a washer dryer. No, no, no. All I'm saying is this is not this is not the answer uh to to this problem and los angeles passed passed a tax increase on on its wealthiest residents a few years ago to help Financial build housing tax. and they have they have done they, they they've only built like three thousand units and they're spending a half a million dollars a unit yep this this is something that is More ridiculous graph. it's, it's yeah. absurd no i agree yeah. Yeah. so we had to, we had to figure out we've talked about this around the table figure out half a million dollars a unit is actually cheap that's pretty good in la right yep Figure out an answer, and let's try our hardest, because there's probably two or three answers. People whom are <laughs> looking at my phone. Who's calling? <laughs> All right, the fastest is up next. Well, that's weird. Somebody was, like, grabbing at his phone? Yeah. I don't know what's up with that. Not very respectful of their fellow panelists. Not very respectful of people who live outside or even want to live outside. I don't know. When people, like, when people don't want to live, like, in society, a lot of times they leave the city. And like we'll find, yeah. try to try to get a piece of property or something, and kind of live off the grid or whatever. I were they rubbing people's faces in that washing machine, or was it just sitting there? Or was that washing machine? Did it even have anything to do with the tent, or did like who knows? You know how people like if their appliances are fucked up, they they're dicks and they just put them out on the sidewalk. Yeah, they just dump them. Yeah. I mean, that could be what's going on there. Uh, also, the th- they said it was a washer and dryer. The one thing on, like, to the left was obviously a fridge, not a not a yeah. washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> also, I guess you probably, I don't know, I don't, I don't know anything. I'm, I don't know anything about that story. I just, I just feel. I don't know. They're like, oh, we, the 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 shelters and and public housing aren't enough. It's like you're against that stuff. Shut up. Like, you're not for those things. 
They'd get mad at San Francisco if they put up a housing project, right? Yep. That's the answer, by the way, is housing projects. They got a bad rap in the, the 70s and 80s because they were uh, put up and then not maintained in the Pacific yeah. or in the, in the Atlantic Northeast. That's, yep. that's why they got a bad rap because those uh, units were not maintained by the, the entities that put them up. And so the, yeah. the units, the, the buildings ca- came into disrepair and people didn't give a shit about where they lived because nobody gave a shit about them and the people that were put, putting them up in charge of them didn't give a shit about where those people live. So why would they give a shit about it? And then, and then not, not for nothing, the media amplified the problems in the housing projects beyond what they actually were because they were good stories to fucking run for the people out. Uh, they would say in Baltimore out County way out in the burbs. Yeah. So, but housing projects are the answer. Nobody wants to do it because, uh, states like Maryland, New York, Massachusetts done fucking screwed the pooch and gave housing projects a real bad name. Right. They have housing projects in other countries that are great. Yeah. Where working people, not even what we would consider poor, where working people live because it's affordable. Yeah. So anyway, we got a couple heroes. We got three of them in a row here. You know how usually when we run clips from uh, local government meetings or whatever, it's um, you don't like them. You don't like the person speaking. Right. Well, you're going to like Jesse Graham. Okay. Our town has never seen so much homophobic crap Mm -hmm. as we have since Miller came along. And I'm Mm -hmm. sick of it. These people have been with us this entire time, and we have never had a problem with it. Mm -hmm. They have never done any of the violence. Is the camera guy her uh, uh, hype man? Maybe, maybe. (laughs) <laughs> that that man and his weird cronies have leaked out of their mouth. Period. I've never been sexually assaulted at a drag show, but I have been in church twice. Period. And I'll tell you what, the men at that church told me it was my fault. This whole scenario should have stopped at the United States of America where we have free speech, but it didn't. We're here. And it's so ironic that he also served in our military that guarantees us these freedoms. Move from another place come here and tell us that a community that we love we are related to we are friends with that they're dangerous that's bullshit they haven't done anything and i'm so sick of listening to this weird fake pious christianity being the reason behind we have to protect the kids jesus didn't go anywhere and condemn people ever and spew hatred and lies and completely annihilate a group of human beings who just want to exist. Any of my four children that I also grew inside my womb in case pious pippies here are part of this community, they will be lucky because there is not a whole lot of families that would love their child unconditionally. And the fact that they don't want to take that away from children, that is child abuse. To immediately tell your child he is wrong for feeling like he doesn't belong. Conversion therapy, child abuse. And you don't need a moral compass to recognize something is wrong when it immediately hurts other people. So why are we even here? Why does hate even have a platform? I'm so sick of these straight white Christian males who are already at the top of the food chain acting like somebody is out to get them. Mm-hmm. They just want to exist, Aaron. Period. Peacefully. Leave them alone. Without your 501c3 getting involved. you all. Mom. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, Jesse. Wow. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Like, apparently, what, what's going on there is this, the guy they showed in the top right, Mr. Miller, had been elected to a local local, uh, local government and has kind of an entourage, and they engage in, like, targeted harassment against people online and in these meetings. And uh, wow. I guess this lady, like, I don't know, she was like, nope, nope, I'm sick of this. <laughs> I'm sick of this. Up next, we got another local government meeting where we got somebody doing heroes work. Uh, gentleman's name is Noah Peterson, and uh, he was removed from the county uh, from a county for a council meeting for defaming the chief of police. Thank you very much. All right, Your three minutes are beginning. Okay, my name is Noah. Address is. 
Hello, hopefully you all don't decide they cannot people for speaking again this evening. Anyways, uh, Taven would not have been kidnapped by the state if we didn't have armed goons responding to traffic infractions. We should use some of that cop money to invest into an actually, vi actually viable public transportation system. Perhaps don't send cops out with weapons and the power to kidnap after folks with their brights on. If you insist on sending someone, send someone who can't do that at least. Um, instead of funding a racist, incredibly harmful drug war, take that money and invest it in things that actually help the problem. Easily accessible public Narcan, as well as free publicly accessible drug tests if we want to actually save lives and stop overdose and stop people from dying. Um, not locking people up in cages for what they either choose to put in their own body or they choose to sell to others to put in their own body. Um, I guess, uh, investment in uh, public substance abuse and mental health uh, program services that are free and easily accessible for anyone at any time. Um, and for the housing crisis, uh, like some things the city could do is expatriate uh, housing from the landlords and expatriate uh, vacant land and build new housing for people. Uh, and I'm going to speak a little bit about last meeting, and this is how what I think should happen. I think the top two fascists in this town, Mayor Michael Hansen and the Chief of Police, need to be removed from power. They have shown themselves do to be not call, Do not address the Chief of Police in that manner. Continue on. I addressed you two in that manner, too, to be clear. Do not address <laughs> the Chief of Police okay. in that Chief manner. of Police and on. Mayor of this town are two top fascists, and they need to go. Your comments um, are ceased. I, they have comments are over. To be unfit. Noah, your this comments <laughs> are over. Why are they over? If you can't handle being told to leave power. You are not going to defame the chief of police of this community. Our rules clearly state You'll that you are not to state derogatory no, remarks I'm about any individual, including an employee of the city of Newton. You cannot. Including an employee of the city of Newton. Cease your comments. Sit down. Sit down. That is the mayor, yes. He needs to go. Sit down. They're going to have to walk me out. Noah, <laughs> council, I'm suspending the council meeting. I am suspending the council meeting. Wow. That was great. Also, defamation, not for nothing, that's generally a legal term, and stating your opinion about someone's character is not defamation of character. <laughs> so, Right, yeah. I mean, his statements were defamatory, but that was by design and um he was yeah i mean he wasn't he wasn't saying anything that was proposed supposedly be true like it wasn't a statement of fact that was in fact false right right but uh i like how he when the guy said oh you can't say that about the uh the police chief he's like i'm actually saying about that that about you too i like <laughs> yeah, how he corrected great. and that was my favorite part he's like, no i said that about you as well actually I don't know what's going on in that town, but I recognize that backdrop, and I feel like we've seen. I feel like I've seen a couple, couple, um, couple clips from there. Usually from the other side, complaining about things like critical race theory or drag queen story hour or whatever. Right. Yeah. So we got one more. Oh no! Wait a minute. I think this is this is the same one. This is Jesse. Oh, Graham. more Jesse. Yeah, we already watched Jesse Graham, so we only had two heroes this week. Okay. So the next one's a little bit long, um, but it's quite good. The penetration of far right misinformation and conspiracy theory into what we would call like it's sort of normie conservative political voter circles. This one's in, I believe, um, this one's in uh, Philadelphia. Yeah. It, it's absolutely fucking stunning. Check this out. Oh, it's Pittsburgh. Doug Mastriano was at the insurrection and he was photographed breaching one of the restricted areas. Is that okay? Which area? Because I saw a video where Capitol officers yes. were taking away barriers and unlocking Opening doors. Opening doors. People. So, yeah. I mean, I... They opened the gates So it shouldn't be disqualifying for an elected official no, no, no. if no, they participated in January 6th? He didn't, he didn't strike anybody? He didn't hurt anybody? Yeah, and the only one know. that died was a protester there, not a Capitol police An unarmed officer. female veteran. Which That's the only one that died. Well, to be fair... She saw a guy in a suit, not a regular cop, but a guy in a suit pointing a gun, and she didn't go the other way. I'm just telling right. you, at a place like the Capitol, you see somebody not in uniform pull a gun out, they're going to pull the trigger. Yeah. They're yeah, there I mean, she, it was not, not that she didn't 
you know, not just saw it, but like people were saying, there's a gun, there's a gun. Like they were notifying her and she didn't stop. But she, and she continued to try to breach that, uh, that door. I think that she was going through. Right. Um, also the, was it this woman said that no cop died, that no Capitol police died there. And that, that is false. I believe one cop did die on the premise during the insurrection. Right. And then another one died at the hospital, like shortly after. Yeah. But so. this is just amazing, right? Because these are just like a random sample of people who voted for Trump in Pittsburgh. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I don't think yeah. this is they were they weren't like chosen because they're like online like um like internet activists or whatever. These are regular people. The only one who died. Right. A police officer did die. No. It was a stroke. Yeah. Oh, I called her out. Not on site. Caused by that. That's because right. he shouldn't have been a police officer. It was one woman. So was what do you make though overall of January sixth? I mean, it was watching that footage. It was pretty disturbing. I mean, there were people throwing excrement at the walls, and it was our, you know, it's the Capitol. That it looked a lot true. like Antifa's actions. Yeah, it looked it's a lot of, except on a much smaller scale. It looked the same as the Black Lives Matter riots. That's it's what been, I what? saw. The Every similarities to be. The country, Minneapolis not just one. burns. Kenosha. Burns. But so it's okay Waukesha just because burns. just because I, one side that you no, disagree with. I'm it's saying okay Antifa infiltrated. It's good for one. It's good for uh, Antifa infiltrated. Anybody, anybody who caused property destruction, that needs to be dealt with. Yeah, but if you're there making side. your voice heard at the right. people's house, no less, yeah. that, I, that's, again, it's a fundamental constitutional right of an American citizen. And people should not be I mean, being held political prisoner uh, because of it. For misdemeanors. I mean, you don't have a, a right to, like, break into the Capitol. <laughs> You know what I mean? Even if uh, you were just entering after other people, like that's not a right, <laughs> not legal. And I mean, not for nothing. Let's say, let's take what they were saying about the the George Floyd protests at face value. Let's suggest, let's say that everything they said is true. We still yeah. have a difference in kind and severity because none of that was intended to disrupt the peaceful transfer of power from one president to another. Right. Obviously, the things they're saying are full of like fucking brain worms and misinformation about like whole cities right. burning down. No, yeah. whole cities didn't burn down. And there's some evidence that in uh, Minneapolis, specifically, the Boogaloo Boys set some of the fires. So, okay. Like, but yeah, I mean, I, that's the only place that there was fires. And I thought it was just the, the one police precinct. And I, like, not for not for nothing, not for nothing. I burn, baby, burn. I mean, like, really? I know. Like after after like <laughs> what that after what the the police from that particular precinct had been putting that community through for the last fucking two or three decades. Yeah, that's Eastern tactics. Yeah, that's what's scary. It was an actual fiery but mostly peaceful protest. And the other ones that were the office. was the protest legitimate our, in your our eyes? Administration, because... I feel like, is using it as their Reich dog fire. Oh. That's exactly what they're. Using. Oh no! Do you think that President Trump could have quelled the violence that day? Not him. I, I don't think no. so. No, I don't think so. it started while he was still speaking. I was actually there. I, I, I was there to, to see what I thought was going to be the last time I ever Wait, saw Wait, I thought it was a peaceful time. protest. Did he tell everybody to go and... I bet that, that lady may not have gone to the Capitol, though, right? Because where the, where the speech was, they had to walk. Like, not a long distance, but yeah. it wasn't at, in front of the Capitol, you know? Right, right. And start riding? No. I didn't think so. No, I, and it actually, um, I, I, I stayed for the whole speech, like... A ton of people did. Mm -hmm. And then we all headed to the Capitol because he said, let's go to the Capitol and, and peacefully let, peacefully let our voices be heard. And we get to That's the not Capitol. what he said. What but... was going on? Because it had already happened. I'm pretty sure I saw Democratic operatives instigating people to oh, cross. Totally. Like, how course. do you know that? Like, how do you wait? What do you mean? I saw a Democratic. What are they wearing? A uniform? <laughs> the uniform, you know, a shirt that said, I am a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> You were there that day. Yeah. What do you think? No, I mean, why, why, why would he tell people to do that? Why, why, why did the people who did that not wait around for him to tell them to do that? He said that, but because that was their speech, plan. If I remember correctly, it, it it happened before he even said that. I, I, yeah, like I knew down to like Deanna Plus probably going to get tear gassed at the Capitol like two days before, <laughs> yeah. right? Like. I mean, yeah, they planned this all before. 
the was I think it was the Proud Boys and Boogaloo Boys. I don't know exactly which group. Oh, the, Bo- the Boogaloo was, Boys actually stayed away. It was the Proud Boys and the Three Percenters. Okay, yeah, they were already at the Capitol while Trump was making his speech, and they were already starting the the riot. There's they were already fighting the cops and right. Oath Keepers. And when they say that the cops like opened gates, what the cops had to do because there weren't enough of them was they had to fall back because when you fall yeah, back, you're protecting yeah. a smaller perimeter. Right. Like that's how and they circles fell back work. all the way to the Capitol and then they breached the Capitol. Right. Well, yeah, that's just how circles work. A smaller one is easier yeah. to defend. <laughs> yeah. They didn't open any doors. It, it, no, no. Guys, full of shit. They, they, they opened, they opened gates and fell back to another position. Yeah. They didn't open the doors. That was in Oregon where a oh yeah member of a member was it oregon or washington where a member of uh, the, the the congress there opened the door to let people in i don't i know what you're talking about i don't remember where it was not not for nothing though, that person got expelled by his colleagues like two weeks later Good. they were like oh you know what we'll put up a lot of bullshit but not that <laughs> yeah i mean they, I think it, the it, timeline didn't he speak because he was back at the white house and then he tweeted so he yeah, tweeted, but after people were still there, there and stuff, yeah. But it's but it started while he was still speaking, and 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 they talk about the fact that oh he didn't do anything for this amount of time. It's like well he was giving his speech and no, that's not that's what time they're talking about. Denied. No, in fact there are in the Secret Service are seem like they're a bit of a problem in all this too. But there are reports yeah. that he was screaming at the Secret Service to drive him to the Capitol, and they would not. Yeah, yeah. And that he, there was a report that he supposedly tried to grab the wheel while they were driving him away. Yeah, yeah. It, and I mean, these are just, this is all back. just hearsay. We don't know for sure what was going on in those cars, right, but true. that does, it doesn't sound out of character for him. Yeah. I, his request. Actually, we have several some here. thousand National, National Guard troops. Yeah. Well, it actually isn't in Pelosi's power. To it was deploy National to, to Guard. Well, she's Speaker of the House. She has no authority but, over but, that whatsoever. And but, frankly, I think that's a good thing. But mm-hmm. well, then, but even so, isn't she was, in charge of security? If there was the that great of a risk that she Not was Nancy. offered them, then why didn't she uh, preemptive, preemptively beef up Capitol Police? Because not everyone watches the Plex. Right. But she does have the authority. <laughs> well, no, she doesn't have the authority to do it. That's what Capitol the reporter just right? said. Her office is in charge of security for the Capitol, right? But that's just one of the, the, the responsibilities of the Speaker's office. It's not like she's like directly organizing the how the Capitol Police behave. You know what I'm saying? It's, right. I mean, she probably authorized the Capitol Police to be there, and they were there, but they were overwhelmed. Right. Or her office did. Maybe there's a whole, you know what I'm saying? Maybe she doesn't. Yeah. She's Maybe she's hands off for that. For all we know that the whoever organizes that is like fairly apolitical and just stays on when the speakership changes. You know what I'm saying? Right. I would hope so actually. Um, yeah, I would hope that's not a political, like that they're not just putting their political friends in that position there, Uh, but apparently they were taken off guard. Yeah. Who thought, let's just do a show of hands. Who thought that the 2020 presidential election was legitimate and free and fair. We have never shut down elections in Pennsylvania. In the middle of the night, and then did something different hours. Wait, what? And that has never happened later. before. What did they do differently? Votes changed and in the shutdown. The counting so how, how did the fraud happen? I don't know, but why did they shut it all down? Everybody went home and went to sleep. Yeah, they went to bed. <laughs> that's that's not uncommon. It, it was late, yeah. and they're like, you know what? Let's pack it up and continue tomorrow. And they locked the fucking place up, and everybody left. Yeah, they have limited staff. How does she know votes change? What the fuck is she talking about? She watched that um, Mike Lindell movie, maybe. Uh, probably. Well, she's probably also considering like most of um, was it Trump's votes came in with the uh, people voting in person, and, and most of Biden's came in with the mail. So she thought it they changed when they started counting more the mail ballots. That. And, um, the people who voted in person in the big cities, it's still yeah. skewed towards Biden oh, because yeah. of the, just the voter, the kind of vote who the voter base in the big cities. And so, yeah. yeah, as it went later, this is what happens in every election. And people think it's like, 
fucking something's going on or something something interesting happening or something new in in like states with large cities as you count more and more and more if the republicans ahead it'll close up and sometimes the democrat will pass the republican like later yeah. in the evening as they pass count more of the votes because it takes longer to count votes in a place like san francisco than in a place like Reading. right because it's just more fucking people this is infuriating. Votes. That's the most. I think that's, that's, that's the most, that the that's the most likely place the problems could happen. And in the last election, they counted those last, and miraculously, the results exactly. completely inverted. Republican primary. If we held it tomorrow in Pennsylvania, who would you vote for? Senate? Who would you be most excited? In a Republican presidential primary. Say tomorrow you had to go vote in a Republican presidential primary in Pennsylvania. Who would you vote for? Hmm. Trump. 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 Yeah, Trump. Trump. I would. I'd like to see one of Trump's kids run. Hmm. DeSantis. I, I would Trump. vote for DeSantis. Yeah. If DeSantis was a candidate, yes, I would vote for him. Vice, would you yeah, vote for DeSantis, DeSantis over Trump? Trump? Yeah. yeah, I would. Yes. Interesting. Who would vote for DeSantis over Trump at this point? I think I would. So, DeSantis is Trump with brown hair. <laughs> <laughs> Younger version. I think DeSantis has a bit more of a um, filter. Yeah, yeah. which and is a good thing. Which is, right. I think, <laughs> brown hair, thing. no social media. DeSantis is yeah. way scarier. Nice guy. Because he actually knows what he's doing. He's, he's young too, so I don't know if he's not in the next. I think his time's coming. Yeah. I just don't think it's right now. I just think the Democratic hatred isn't there for DeSantis. It's just pre-existing for Trump. It yeah. will be if he's the nominee. Yeah. 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 Right. Maybe, but yep. they'd have to ramp it up and they don't have enough, that much time to do that. Well, she's a great example. It turned, it, you, they turned you towards him. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how much that you represent the people out there. So you were a Clinton, Trump yeah. voter. Yeah. And, um, and even though being so passionate, you went on January 6th. Well, it, be, be, because everything had changed, you know, like um, when Clinton didn't win, I, would, I woke up in the morning and I was fine, but it was like the rest of the world was acting like it was 9-11 for real, you know, <laughs> and everybody has been completely obsessed with hatred for Trump. And, they, and if you, you, you can't walk down the street wearing a certain kind of hat mm -hmm. because everyone will say you're asking for whatever happens to you. Yeah. And how is that American? That was amazing. Yeah. That was crazy. I'm not sure like, like what, what we can even say about that. Like, first of all, if let's take this lady at face value that she voted for Clinton and then, um, people saying mean things about Trump made her vote for Trump. All she's saying is those people that were saying mean things about Trump control her. Yeah. They decided who she Pretty voted much. for. man all right we're not gonna get fuck all right let's go with uh let's go with candace owens candace owens right. is gonna say something about harvey weinstein here um you would think that she would take this opportunity to attack hollywood right be like well this right. is what you get in hollywood oh nope that's not what you're gonna get here buddy all right i don't care what you have to say about Harvey Weinstein as an individual, I think he sucks. I think he did broker his power to get what he wanted. I think it was a total sleazeball. That's a good defense. If she openly said that she consented, but she was just faking her consent, what, what is the requirement here? How is a man supposed to know that you're actually not consenting, but you're faking your consent in the form of faking an orgasm with him? And it is interesting that she also wasn't an aspiring actress. As I've said, I, I would have to speak about each individual person that went through this. I actually personally have always believed that something happened to Rose McGowan, and I was going to have her on my show a while ago, but we didn't end up making it work. Yes, because she's not going to go on your show. Uh, but <laughs> some of these women that jumped onto the Me Too movement, not so much. I think some of these women were basically prostitutes and were willing to do whatever it took Whoa. to get part, and they were willing wow. to you know, undignify themselves 
and go so far as to sleep with this disgusting man. And he took the power that was given to him. He didn't care. People did a deal with the, de with the devil. And then when it became convenient after they got what they wanted, which is the defense's argument, she got what she wanted. And they even go on to say that she's been to his house since. Kind of compelling, right? You're the face of, you're, you're claiming that this person sexually assaulted you. Why would you continue to ask him to, to contribute financially to your husband's campaign for governor throughout the years? Why would you allow him to host you as Harvey Weinstein did? He hosted the news well, as guests. Sounds like there's a financial incentive there. Right. Like the whole thing sounds like financial incentive was being hung over this person's head. Yeah. Like coercion isn't force but it's still rape if you use coercion to get someone to yeah. sleep with you that's still you're still violating consent consent needs to be right. ongoing and enthusiastic or it's not consent right parties that to me you, you can say what you want but if you're a victim and you see somebody that is your rapist you do not go to their house when they invite you to go to their house. It's just, it's not something that doesn't seem like regular behavior. And I know what you're going to say. That's victim blaming. Yes. That's not, it, does, it you, is. you might want to hang out with your rapist for years and years and take pictures with them after you were raped and assaulted. Okay. Maybe I'm just saying that this is a very strong defense. No, no, she's just blaming the victims and it's, yeah, it's why is she even doing this? I don't understand. <laughs> Right, she had to go a, after Hollywood with this. I don't get this. Right, this is such a layup for her, especially with Daily Wire putting out their new, really crappy uh, drama series. That she yeah. could be like, this is what happens if you work with Hollywood. You run into monsters, Democrat monsters right. like Harvey Weinstein. Like this is just such a, just such a gimme. It was just hanging there, and she went the other way and just called them sluts, basically. <laughs> like, yeah, like yo, dude. When you've been victimized by somebody, a lot of times you're, you're, it changes, it changes you and you're not going to think clearly about every action you take with respect to them. Maybe, maybe at first she was like, oh, I didn't really want to, but you know, it's whatever. And then over time she was like, you know what? No, fuck that. Actually. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Like maybe, you know, we try to like rationalize what happens to us. We all do it. Either right. what happens to us via our own behavior or if other people hurt us. Some people will try to rationalize it. It doesn't make them bad. It makes them human. Yeah. And I don't know enough about these matters. I'm not an expert on uh, survivors of sexual assault. So maybe I'll, I'll leave it there because I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. Um, I'll do that later after I start drinking. I'm sure. Um, here's Matt Walsh on uh, victims of crime who happen to be trans. I'm sure this will be fantastic. Great. So according to them, according to the left, no trans person is ever killed except as a hate crime. If it weren't for hate crimes, trans people would never be killed. There would be a, a murder rate of zero. If Nobody says that. Yeah, he's full of shit. Like, yeah, trans people are killed for all the same reasons everyone else is killed for in addition to hate crimes. Right. Not for hate crimes. When in reality, when you look at the data, you see that anti-trans hate crimes are extremely rare. Okay, almost they're not extremely almost rare. None of these and of these uh, murders are even t tangentially linked to hate crimes. In reality, I'm sure that's bullshit. Uh, trans people, for the most part, are murdered for the same reason everybody else is: domestic disputes, drug-related, prostitution. So if the trans murder rate is higher than average, it's because well, those the first one domestic disputes is the number is the reason a lot of people are murdered. Those other ones, they don't even fuck and they're not even a drop in the bucket yeah. compared to domestic disputes. Yeah, the people most likely to kill you are the, if you have a if you have your family uh, and you do dinner every night with your family, you're sitting around a table with the people most likely to murder you. Yeah, they engage in high risk activities more than average prostitution, drug activity. And they do engage in those high-risk high risk activities more than average. Um, and yet, because as they're it turns out, very much excluded from society. Right. You got you to gotta pay your bills somehow. Yeah. Even though they engage in these high-risk activities more than average, the trans murder rate is lower than the national average. A lot lower. It's like three times lower hmm? than the national average. So there were last year about 45. I don't have any data in front of me, but I, I feel like he's full of shit. 
Yeah, I don't so know. I, I I don't know where you would. I don't know how how you would. Like if someone, let me be careful here. If someone has socially transitioned, right? Yeah. But has had no, no medical intervention and their body is discovered, maybe unfortunately sometime after they were murdered, then how would like, how would the investigators like initially even find out that person was trans or non-binary or gender non-conforming if they weren't out to their family? 45. I think he's messing around with, he's cherry picking or something with the data. I don't have the data. Uh, I can't look at it. Um, I think he's, he's being an asshole somehow. I bet his podcast has extensive show notes and tells you where he got all his information. Sure. (laughs) The entire year in the whole country. That's out of a population of about 1.6 million people who identify as trans, according to most recent estimates. And that number, of course, is going up uh, uh, very, very fast, especially among young people. So 45 out of 1.6 million puts the murder rate at 0.002%. That's the epidemic, 0.002%. For the general population, it's 0.006%. That's three times higher. Also, by the way, if trans people were really terrified for their lives, they, they wouldn't be act like when you see Dylan Mulvaney, do you see someone who's who's acting like like uh, he's terrified for his life? Like there's just uh, there, there are anti-trans murderers waiting around every corner. Is that how he's carrying on? OK, I don't know who he's talking about, but I almost am positive. Whoever that was, he just dead named them. Yeah, probably. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know who he's talking about, but I'm almost positive he just dead named somebody. So, before we move on from that uh, particular video, um, <laughs> I don't know if people. I'm sure a lot of people who are listening and in our chat know uh, Jesse Gender did a very long, pretty good uh, video on Matt Walsh, and because he came out with that movie, What Is a Woman, right? And she just destroys him. <laughs> And then also claims that uh, he uh, tried to uh, send his goons after on uh, um, on Twitter and and I think it was Twitter and some other places. When he it, it's we'll go we'll go a couple minutes over here. When these people try to send their goons after you, their goons suck. Like when they try to send yeah. them after you on Twitter. Like I'm not saying that people don't like experience harassment or whatever. I don't want to like give that impression. But Matt Walsh sent his people after a friend of our show, Justin Justin Freakin. Yeah, and that, that and was they really all ended up blocking him, <laughs> like in the end, because he like he was like he stood up for himself, right? And yeah, not everybody is good at that. Now, but not everybody has that tool that that toolkit. People are going through other trauma where this this happens to them, and they're not able to do that. But Brett Weinstein, the subject of our next clip, tried to send his weirdos after me, and. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris from decoding the gurus actually hit me up. He's like, Hey, I, you know, I, I just woken up and I had seen, I'd opened my Twitter and uh, my uh, mentions were lit up because I'd done a thread the night before about one of Brett Brett's uh, podcasts. Yeah. And I saw the DMS and I was like, nobody ever DMS me on Twitter. And I was like, Oh, it's Chris. And then he hits me up. He's like, Hey, you doing okay, man. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> he's like, Oh, he's like, well, uh, Brett's people are like coming after you in your comments. I'm like, really? This is the best thing that ever happened. I'll be back. <laughs> but it's it's different for other people and i don't want to i don't want to yeah. diminish like the harassment experience that other people have i know about gamergate and i know that people left the internet because of like what yeah. happened during gamergate but i just also know that like these people's goons aren't very effective yeah um, well also i also i want to point out the other thing that uh she's not positive it was them but uh, she thinks that they went after her the video that she put up the first time and got it taken down by youtube with a uh you know a strike you know oh, not for like just, harassing matt walsh or whatever yeah it was some community standards thing uh and then it took and that's like her like 100 percent like you know livelihood now that's all she does and um they they basically went after her livelihood now luckily she has some other uh income from other places but to some extent but that was like most of her income comes from youtube and they went after her for that and just real quick from our chat, the uh, far left publication Forbes reported that there were uh, 375 trans people uh, murdered in 2021. Wow. Okay. So 
you know, the far left, we know, we know Forbes, they're uh, communists. Yeah, that, that communist. They're social justice warriors is, over there at Forbes. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, we got two more. We're going a couple minutes long, even though the show's already twice as long, the podcast is already twice as long as it is. We got yeah. Brett Weinstein has reached peak fucking paranoia, everybody. Like, just <laughs> absolute fucking, pe- even Heather, according to the comments under this, even Heather in this clip is like, I don't know about all this. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I had a very odd experience this morning. At the end of reading Steve Kirsch's piece, um, I'm not sure exactly what happened on my phone, but somehow the next screen that showed up was a browser window. And in the browser window was a DuckDuckGo search, as far as I know, already completed on the word suicide. Which you had not done. I absolutely did not. So he's complaining about a pop-up ad of something? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we have no way of knowing what happened here if he's just making this up. Does he not have script block? What's going on? Search on the word suicide in any time in memory. I'm sure we can come up with explanations that would account for this showing up in that way. But I also know that um, we have been a a sticky wicket for Goliath, and one can imagine that. Just <laughs> imagine Goliath. <laughs> like the fucking NSA did that. You know, could scare certain Come on, people get off, out of here. Or worse, look, there are obviously hundreds of billions of dollars at stake, and criminal liability, and all sorts of things. The kinds of things that people do terrible stuff over. And um, I felt it was necessary just to, uh, to make it clear that if that was some kind of a message, then um, this idea is nowhere in my thoughts. The only time... If something were to happen to you. Yeah. And the explanation after an investigation uh, is suicide. You are saying here and now that it was not. Well... Maybe it was a technical glitch. If it wasn't a technical glitch, maybe it was just a message designed to scare. If it wasn't that... Maybe it was his own uh, glitch, that he really did do the search and just forgot uh, about it. You know. um, Could be anything. We can't afford to have a world that's governed by people who um, threaten as a mechanism to get what they want. So... Whatever the expert, but who's threatening you? You don't even know who's threatening it. Discussion needed to be had. (laughs) Not very effective. uh, I don't know. I feel better for having done it. Like who fucking knows? Like if if like yeah, if if a browser window was up up on my phone with something I didn't think I searched for, like I would think maybe I started to type one word in or something, and then just closed the browser out, and like the autocomplete did something. Like yeah, I would just assume like I just would. I would just not worry about it, and um. Who fucking knows? I don't know if that even happened. I, know, I like how he made sure to point out that he uses the DuckDuckGo browser. Maybe DuckDuckGo's out to get him. <laughs> Maybe. One more story. Last week, we covered Newsmax, of all people, banning Laura Logan after she just did a straight-up blood libel. Like, she just straight-up said that wow. people are drinking baby blood. Well, she can't go on Newsmax anymore, which is, you would think, the bottom of the barrel. But don't worry. Mike Lindell has a network that she's going to go on and she's going to double down on the blood libel. The reason I believe that people reacted that way is it's all about the children. The question they don't want us asking is where are all the missing children? What happens to they all got found? How can hundreds of thousands (laughs) of kids go missing in the United States every year and nobody knows where they are? They just vanish. I don't think so. Every sex. No, they all got found. Like the vast majority of them were either custody disputes or even more benign, a custody misunderstanding where you're both busy and you're co-parenting. Oh, I thought I had the kids. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I guess you have. And, And somebody you call the cops because your kids are missing. And it turns out yeah. your, your ex-spouse just picked them up because there was just some miscommunication. That's ex- right. like, and that's like a huge number of them. Another one is like kidnapping by your former, your former spouse, but right. that's much more rare. And yeah, 
this thing where this thing she's suggesting is like a like a trafficking scenario and that like generally happens to people outside of the country who are brought into the country yeah trafficking ring worldwide knows bring the kids to the united states that this administration is participating in the trafficking of kids because they're paying uh, companies, LLCs, and nonprofits and church groups, they're paying them to take these kids and yep. disappear them, including the report that you showed, have talked about yeah, the blood of young complete, children being crazy to anti-aging. Bullshit. And why does no... She just said that the blood... Like, check this out. ...disappear them, including the report that you showed, have talked about the blood of young children being the secret to anti-aging. And why does no... This is Peter Thiel. Else, where <laughs> yeah. does the blood come from? How do you get the blood of young children? And does it Yeah, the thing that's not happening well, except Peter Thiel. It, yeah, she's describing the thing that isn't happening. Yeah. Younger and younger and younger. So now you're talk are you talking about the blood of babies now? Is that what you're talking about? Also, did you look see the background of her video there? She is uh looks like she's doing pretty well. Doing pretty well for herself. Yeah, that's not that's not real surprising because she was like a like I don't want to say legitimate because she was like always kind of this far right kook, but she was yeah. like th- viewed in the the more mainstream right as like a legitimate talking head type of person. And I don't I don't want to I don't want to get this wrong, so I'm not gonna. Um, I, she had like some kind of job somewhere, like yeah. either with the Republican Party or maybe with Fox, something like that, where right. she was like. It was like a respectable job title, or at least it would be <laughs> if she was working yeah. for like a different organization. And then she just lost the plot and went full fucking QAnon. The The problem with this isn't so much that she's like accusing the Biden administration of being part of a child trafficking ring. The problem with this is the history of these kinds of claims. This is blood libel. This is an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory that is very old. It is mentioned in the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which you should not read. Right. Um, if you're if you're like an extremism researcher, you've probably already read it. And that's the problem with this is that it's a dog whistle. It's not even a dog whistle at this point. Like everybody knows what the fuck blood libel is. She knows exactly what she's doing and exactly who she's telling exactly what. Otherwise, yeah. she wouldn't be out there just repeating it over and over and over again after she's been told by countless people that what she's doing is very old anti-Semitic tropes. And it's just yeah. fucking disgusting. It's just fucking disgusting, especially with all the shit with Kanye going on right now, like anti-Semitism being even more mainstream than it was, it seems like. Just all fucking bad. And um, that's usually how we end the show. Everything. F- Everything's bad. All the, and I got even Ben Shapiro agrees, right? Yeah. Like, uh, where to go? Oops. All the things are bad. There are no good things. Thanks for tuning into the Plex, everybody. We do the show live every Sunday, seven p.m. Pacific. Matt, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. I'll see you tomorrow for the recording of the Tech Show. You can check that out. It's called How the Tech Are You? Because we think we're clever. Um, you can support this project Patreon.com/slash Echoplex. And um, also just go to our website, echoplexmedia.com. Hit that support tab. There's other ways to support. The Twitch community has been a very generous this month, and I appreciate that. Twitch.tv slash echoplexmedia to check out all of our live shows. Change the color of the lights. Change the contents of my beverage. I think Matt's going to take his leave, and we're going to go into red light. Thanks again, Matt. Thanks for having me. This is Boomers by Periscope.
Hey everybody, we got a brand new swag shop. It's powered by Fourth Wall and it's really great. It's at eplex.store. That's E P L E X dot store. Hopefully, you find something there you like. I'm partial to the one with Jordan Peterson and Jesus.